You were made for life, not death. Say that I was made for life, not death. You were made for life, not death. You were made for health, not disease. You were made for success, not failure. You were made to be a winner. Say, I'm a winner. Hallelujah. God wants no one to live without, uh, without sight or to be alone, uh, without friends, or to be unhappy. Think about it. Amen. His love is in action now. He wants no one to live in shame or fear or disgrace. Listen to this. He paid a big, big price for you. How many of you know that? How many believe that? And he said, amen, if the price that he paid was so big, so huge, amen. You know what? If it proves nothing at all, it proves your value and your worth to him. Amen. So let's talk this morning. Well, I'm introducing to you this, uh, <coughs> sorry. God's divine love plan. What was God's greatest idea to human beings? Love is God's greatest idea. Amen. That has come from God to human beings. Think about it. There is faith. There is hope. There is love. But the great You got it already. You were created by God. So you are a product of. Not, mere, not, merely the, not merely the product of your parents' passions. But it is much deeper and greater than that. And bigger than that. You were created by the God of love makes you a product of love. You were not made for hate or for fear. You were made for life, not for death. You were made for health, not for disease. You were made for success, not failure. Think about it. You were made for good things, not bad things. God loves you so much that he paid a big, big, big price. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. So that he can have you near him. You, so that he can have you close to him. You know what that price was? That price was the price of his son. Hallelujah. You know the Bible tells us that Jesus came to earth. Amen. And everything that he did, he showed us how much, amen, God values people. I'm going to highlight some of those, uh, amen, uh, using biblical examples. First of all, love in action, Mark chapter 10, verses 46 and 47. Now when they came to Jericho, 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 when they came to Jericho, a cursed place. Uh, and next time we'll talk about that. Uh, as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great uh, multitude, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus. The son of Tamias sat on the road begging. Begging. And I'm thinking that that day perhaps, uh, I can't help it uh, but to make a comment here. I'm thinking that that day perhaps, Andre, that uh, he's collecting a little extra. A little extra. Guys, what is happening? 
happening? What is happening? Jesus is in the area. So he heard. That's just my thought, right? Hallelujah. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth, that Jesus of Nazareth, of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Look at this story a little bit. Uh, Jesus uh, passed by uh, a blind beggar. Amen. Uh, his name, of course, is Bartimaeus. Uh, amen. Uh, the blind man cried, Jesus, uh, have mercy on me. Uh, what did the crowd say? Uh, the crowd told him, stop quiet, be quiet. Uh, but uh, but uh, when Jesus heard him, uh, amen, uh, he stopped there. Amen. He stopped in the road uh, and he told him uh, to come here. Why did Jesus uh, stop, uh, amen, uh, and call him? Uh, because I believe that Jesus uh, is interested uh, in people. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus is not against uh, people. Uh, his thinking uh, towards us is not uh, one of cruelty. Uh, he came to Help us, uh, hallelujah to the Lamb, uh, amen, uh, because he wants no one uh, to live without sight uh, or, to do, or to be alone uh, without friends uh, or to be unhappy, uh, amen. Uh, when blind Bartimaeus uh, heard uh, that Jesus was calling, uh, the Bible says that he got rid of the garment. Uh, next time we'll talk about the garment, uh, hallelujah, but he he jumped up uh, and he came to Jesus. Uh, amen. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He simply said, I want uh, to see. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus said to him, all right, it is done. Your faith has healed you and instantly the blind man uh, could see uh, and he followed Jesus uh, he left Jericho and he followed Jesus uh, down the road uh, amen that is love in action here is the gospel here is the good news about God's love plan amen is that Jesus is unchanged today he's a same today and tomorrow. Amen. And he wants to meet your every need. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That is not wishful thinking. That is God's love in action. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Now let's look at the healing power of love. One day a leper came to Jesus. Amen. The disciples said to him, get away. He's unclean. Get him away. He should not be amongst us. But Jesus said, no, let him come because he has Faith, hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, my dear friend, the purpose of Christ coming, amen, was to help people, amen, to save people, to bless people. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Love, love, love caused our Lord Jesus to reach out his hand and touch that leper who was untouchable, amen, and his flesh immediately and instantly was healed. Amen. This morning I believe that Jesus is reaching out to you. Reaching out to you. I have been long enough, I, I have been around long enough. I've lived long enough. I've spoken to sufficient number of persons to know that everybody has issues in life. 
Some have bigger ones. Amen. Some has bigger ones than others. Amen. But at some juncture, at some point in life, amen, we have issues that we, amen, that confront us, that we need to deal with. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. And, amen, the help of man is either limited or vain. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But with Jesus, I want to let you know, amen, his help is unlimited. He is all powerful. Hallelujah. He is reaching out to you, even as you're listening to this message this morning. His love plan, amen, is to do whatever is necessary to lift you to happiness, to health, to success, to peace. Oh, glory be to God. I say hallelujah. John chapter 8. God is not mad at you. How many of you feel sometimes God forget you? Or he neglect you? Or he might just be mad. Mad at me. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him <clears throat> and he sat down and taught. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery and when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses say, in the law, he commanded us that such should be stoned to death. Remember, practice, practice life, practice love, not tradition and religion. Because tradition, religion keeps you down, keeps you in bondage. Keeps you under, amen, uh, under a yoke uh, and in a fix. Uh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, amen. Now Moses, the Lord commanded us that such uh, should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, uh, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote uh, on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. And so when, he con and so when they continued asking him, he raised up himself and said unto them, He who is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. Verse 7, I go on to verse 10. Then G when Jesus raised up himself and saw that no one, no one but the one, but, but saw no one but the woman, he said unto a woman, where those accusers of yours has no one condemned you? Jesus said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn you. Go and say no more. They brought a prostitute to Jesus one day. Caught in the very act. Hallelujah. Self-righteous people said, let us stone her to death. She's unclean. Jesus said, now wait a minute. Hold your horses. Hallelujah. God did not send me, his son, to the world, to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. They came to the wrong guy. Wrong person, wrong address. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I say hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. 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 You see, my dear friend, God values each human being. He values each human 
and use you. Amen. Amen. So he forgave her, her sin. Hallelujah. He made her pure. He made her clean again. He restored her self-dignity and self-esteem as a lady. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah to the Lamb. It seemed to me as if it is a difficult thing, if not an impossible thing for God to accuse or to judge or to condemn you. His value of you as a person is so great. He thinks so highly about you. Hallelujah. That he seeks to lift you up. He seeks to bless you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. And to help you to become all that the Father created you to be. Amen. You have worth and value to him. Amen. I want to relate to you a beautiful story that I heard. I heard of a young woman who practiced, who had practiced prostitution since the teenage days. She attended a crusade and she heard the teachings of God, love, plan. She heard about God's love plan. Amen. Now, she didn't go to hear that. But she really went because she had a large cancerous tumor in her womb. And she heard that in that crusade that they were praying for people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At any rate, here she was, a terminal case. She was rejected by society. She was not yet 30 years of age. 30 years old, amen. But in that service, in that crusade, she discovered that God loved her and that God valued her as she was, amen. And that he was not mad at her, amen. She heard the teaching that God loved her so much all the years that she was living in prostitution and that God kept on loving her and never gave up on her. Amen. She wept when she learned that this man loved her. Amen. She learned that he had come to this world on her behalf and paid a ransom and a penalty and was beaten. Hallelujah. Amen. It caused her to weep openly. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When she heard that he had already assumed all of her guilt. Hallelujah. All of her condemnation. All, amen, of the judgment of her sins. Amen. She heard it. Amen. And she was moved. Moved to tears. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. She understood that Jesus had already suffered, had already suffered the penalty that she deserved. Further to that, that he had done it in order that she might be bought back, that she might be redeemed. That she might be restored to God and justified and made righteous, amen, as though she had never committed a wrong. How is that for love? God, God had already did. His part, 
John chapter 19 verse 30 tells us uh, when Jesus therefore received the vinegar or the sour wine, he said it is finished. I'm sure I saw Kyle here earlier. Tetelestai. I mean, I mean that guy just picked it up the first time. It is finished. Paid in full. It cannot be improved or upon. Nothing could be subtracted. Nothing could be added. It is finished. Hallelujah. That young woman understood for the first time that Jesus had already endured the penalty and judgment for her sins. Amen. And therefore, they could never be legally punished. A second time, you don't pay a debt twice. It's already paid. Already paid. Already paid. Hallelujah. I say, Hallelujah. Amen. That means, therefore, she was uh, no longer guilty. Amen. And she learned that the cross of Jesus proved several things. Number one, God valued her. She was valued by God. It's no different with you. It's no different to me. With me. Hallelujah. God values. I say God values me. Slap the person in their hands. Well, somewhere. And tell them God values you too. Say you are valuable to God. Number two. Amen. She learned that God loved her. She was loved by God. God loved the world. You are part of the world. Hallelujah. Number three. Her sins had already been punished. Already been punished. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Number four, God cared for her even before she knew about him. The Bible tells us that God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet ungodly. Amen. Hallelujah. He had already died for us while we were not even thinking about him. He had already died for us. He had already paid the price for us. Amen. So God cares for you too, even, uh, even before you knew about him. And number five, uh, hallelujah, that God uh, had already redeemed her and that all that she had to do was to hear about uh, his great love plan, uh, believe in it, uh, Accept it. Do you believe it? Receive it. That should set us free. That should set us free. Not thinking. Amen. In Amen. Those that are in bondage. Hallelujah. That there is this thing that is always hanging over us. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, so and so want to see me. I wonder if he find out what it is I did. Hallelujah. Well, it doesn't matter if we believe the gospel. Hallelujah. And we accept it. We know that we know that we know. Hallelujah that he paid the price uh, and that if we will trust him uh, and believe in him uh, and receive him, uh, hallelujah, we are free, hallelujah. Calvin, do you understand that? That woman trusted Jesus. She trusted what Jesus did on her behalf. She accepted him. And his life, she accepted him and his life into her, inside of her. And guess what happened? She was saved instantly. In 
instantly. Amen. And, and, hallelujah, when she began, or rather as she began thanking him for his love. Amen. Guess what happened? The story said in her testimony, she said, that big tumor disappeared. Hallelujah. It was a miracle. She was totally healed. She was at peace with God. Hallelujah. He had come. Amen. He had come to live with her. Amen. And she in turn had come to his home, to him, to stay with him, to live with him, to reside with him. Amen. And in her body, amen, her body reflected the power of God's life at work in her. You know, the cancer could not stay. If today you're sick, hallelujah, it doesn't matter whether it's terminal or otherwise, hallelujah, amen, he paid the price already, he was wounded for your transgressions and bruised for your iniquities, the punishment for your sins or for the peace with God was laid upon him and by the stripes that he received, you are healed, amen, whether it is bodily, whether it is an organ, whether it is in your your cell or in your blood, hallelujah, whether it is in your mind, in your emotions, I don't care, hallelujah, amen, he paid the price already, the debt was paid, amen, no debt has to be paid twice, it was already paid, believe it, accept it, receive it, in the name of the living Christ. Jesus, hallelujah. Cancer could not stay. You see, my dear friend, God's love plan is to restore people. His love plan is to redeem people. Hallelujah. His love plan is never to destroy anyone. Not their health. Not their happiness, not their reputation, certainly not their self esteem. This morning, God wants to do good things for you today. How I many you know God is a good God? God is never a bad God. Say, God is a good God. Say it again like you mean it. God is a good God. Just remind yourself, God is a good God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. If I can borrow the words of uh, one of the uh, evangelists of yesteryear, amen, and believe that something good is going to happen to you today. Amen, because God is a good God. Hallelujah. God wants to do good things for you today. His love is in action now. He wants to do for you what you need, what you are in need of, or what you desire. If only you will believe. In his love plan. Transforming power. Matthew chapter 8 verses 26. To chapter 9 verse 1. Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 21. Luke chapter 8 26 to 40. Tells us uh, an interesting story. Hallelujah. About a demoniac uh, 
amen, who lived in the cemetery. Let me back up, back up a little. Amen. Uh, Jesus uh, came out of a boat one day, uh, and a wild man, I'm paraphrasing his whole story, hallelujah, a wild man came running from the tombs, uh, amen. Night and day, this poor guy screamed and cut himself with sharp stones. Hallelujah. He was tormented and possessed by demons. But Jesus, amen, in encountering him, hallelujah, he spoke to the evil spirits and they came out of the man. Hallelujah. And the man was healed. That is what Christ came to do. Hallelujah. Amen. He never wants a human person to live in shame. Amen. Or in fear. Or in disgrace. Think about it. I find the gospel is so simple. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus values people. He values you. He values every individual. Amen. I say amen. And he will do whatsoever, whatsoever you need in order to develop the finest, amen, potential as a Jesus person. I don't know where come the, all this war and strife when we are Jesus people. Hallelujah. He wants to help you to develop into the finest. The best. That he has endowed you with. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. In other words, he wants you to be successful. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be healthy. Amen. Amen. He wants you, amen, to live on the top, my dear friend. Amen. Because, amen, you were created for love. You will say, I was created by love. Why does God love you so much? Why did Jesus give his life for you? Why did he die in your place? Why did he send such a wonderful plan to you? Why is he reminding you of it through this message? I tell you, my friend, it is because God loves you. God loves you just as you are. You are created by love. God paid a big price for you, which proves your worth to him. The first proof that God had chosen to reach out to you is already evident. What is that proof? Amen. What is that proof? came down. You're listening to this message this morning. Whatever you need or desire from God, it has already begun. Before you came into this world, amen, and you were, amen, in the womb of your mother, did you exist? The answer is yes. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah as you continue to listen this, this morning. Hallelujah. I'm coming out to a close. I want you to know, my friend, hallelujah, God is at work. Amen. On whatever is the situation in your life. Can I, re can I repeat that? God is at work. Already 
at work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. God's big love plan will become more real and clearer to you. Hallelujah. As, as, as it becomes clear to you, as it becomes uh, 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 um, more evident. Uh, hallelujah. I want you to know, uh, amen, uh, that you will discover some secrets. Uh, amen. Uh, some secrets uh, which will open. Uh, amen. Uh, which will open uh, to you a new life style of happiness, a new lifestyle, hallelujah, of the Christian life, a new lifestyle of being a Jesus person, a new lifestyle, hallelujah, of a healthy individual, a new lifestyle of prosperity, a new lifestyle of Self-word, hallelujah to the Lamb. And as you continue to listen to this message, we shall continue next week if the Lord tarry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will discover how to take control of your life. How to arrest and bring under subjection situations that seem to defeat you time and again. Hallelujah. And how, amen, how with his help, hallelujah to the Lamb, you will take control and you would live victorious. You would learn how to relate yourself. You would learn how to relate yourself, amen, to the happy lifestyle that God created for you. Amen. So I will begin next week. The Lord, sorry, I know we'll have limited time because next week is also our testimony, Victory Sunday. Right? That's, is it till Sunday, is it? Right. And we have to finish on time to get down the road as well. But I'll get a few words in. And I will tell you about purpose out of confusion. Out of confusion. God has purpose. I will tell you that Jesus Christ is not a religion, but a person. I will also somewhere along the line tell you why we need to evangelize religious people. Amen. Life is not without purpose. Amen. Amen. There is purpose to life. Hallelujah. Life without purpose leads to nothingness. Amen. Hallelujah. And sometimes, you know, difficulties, sometimes, amen, when we are overwhelmed by questions and problems, hallelujah, we are tempted to ask questions, is there God? I want to address those things, I will be addressing those things, hallelujah, I say hallelujah, amen. I want to tell you in this message, my dear friend, hallelujah, that there is hope, hope for every one of us here today. Amen. 
So I'm going to close here. There are lots of things we need to do here this morning. I'm going to close here. And in a little bit, I'm going to open the altar. For those among us that have need for special prayer, that this God, this same Jesus, is alive and interested in you. He's not against you. He wants to lift you up. He's an uplifter. Hallelujah. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to share with your people in these few minutes. An introduction to God's divine love plan. Help us to realize, oh God, how much you love us. How much you care for us. That you did what you didn't have to do. You condescended to men of low estate. You became one of us. You the creator, you became part of the creation. Hallelujah. And on that cross, you represented us. Before God the Father, you are representing us. You paid that great and ultimate price. Hallelujah. That demand that was necessary, you paid it. You paid it in full. And you declared it is finished. It is completely complete. Hallelujah. So God, we bless your name today. Hallelujah.